Hello, I'm Aristide from Metabolism of Cities and in this video we will discuss why our climate crisis is perhaps a material crisis. So we're right in the middle of a climate crisis. You've, you've heard it everywhere, you've seen a number of strikes, you've seen a number of documentaries, you've seen a number of IPCC reports, you know already probably everything about it. What I want to say here is that perhaps we, with the climate crisis, we're thinking about the symptoms and not about the cause. Why am I saying that material, uh, materials are perhaps at the root of the problem and more important than the climate crisis is because most of the greenhouse gas emissions that we, that we generate are because one way or another we, uh, we produce, we manufacture, we uh, move around materials. Um, this is true for uh, food, but it's also true for uh, construction materials, it's also true for electronics, it's, it's true for most of what we have in order to function as a society. But what we put forward are the climatic um, consequences of it, which is greenhouse gas emissions, which is uh, global warming um, or climate change in general, because uh, this is, <laughs> it's not always global warming. Um, so we see these consequences and we want to treat these. And the, the main responses and solutions are, well, um, perhaps let's take energy, which is uh, consumption of energy is perhaps the, one of the biggest uh, resp uh, responsible factors for greenhouse gas emissions and let's make it more green. So instead of uh, having coal powered plants, uh, let's have them natural gas or even better, renewable energy. But what you, you don't think about it is that, well, all of these solutions require more materials or more energy. So to create a solar panel, you require a number of materials that we will probably end up not having at the end of it. So that means that even if we get our energy more green, at the end we won't have enough materials to make our economies more green. And this means that, of course, what we have to do is to reduce our consumption overall of uh, energy, of um, all of the things that create greenhouse gas emissions, but we still have to think that, or at least for me, the main um, pressure point here is resource depletion. Because if we don't have resources, then we won't allow the possibility to create solutions in order to mitigate greenhouse gas emissions. So the so the lesson here is not really saying let's stop striking, of course not. This is a great movement and this is where we should be going. However, try to always link problems together because there are not many people who are striking against um, miners in, uh, in Chile that are uh, extracting uh, copper, for instance, or all of the precious metals that we need for um, solar power, uh, sol solar panels, or for wind turbines. All of that requires precious materials that we might not get. And there are people behind it that are actually extracting these materials. Yet we don't strike as much for that cause rather than climate change. So what I'm saying here is that try to always think that challenges are linked, interlinked, interwoven, and we need to prepare for solutions that can cover them all. So yes, it's great to, uh, to switch uh, to a bike instead of a car, but perhaps reducing your consumption every day, becoming vegetarian, a number of other things are also as important, if not more important for mitigating our greenhouse gas emissions. I invite you to go have a look at the uh, IRP work, so the International Resource Panel, who is trying to uh, combine these efforts of uh, greenhouse gas emissions or carbon footprint and material footprint. Um, I'll also link some studies in the description. I hope you're gonna also put some comments about your thoughts and about potential solutions that you want to propose. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.